the Lewis structure of iron two oxide, which is FeO. It's going to feel easy after this. Iron is a metal. I mean, it's a typical metal. It's iron after all. From the left-hand side of the periodic table, metals like to lose electrons. Oxygen is a non-metal. From the right-hand side of the staircase, it wants to gain electrons. Now you're being told that the iron here has a charge of plus two. When you're told the valence on a transition metal, you're supposed to assume that that's how many valence electrons it brings. So there's my iron atom with its two valence electrons. Oxygen, on the other hand, is in group 16 of the periodic table. It is two electrons short of a full octet. It brings six valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. It wants a full octet. Now, to get it, to get the full octet, it's going to take electrons away from things with lower electronegativities like metals. So iron gives up one of its electrons to complete this pair of electrons on oxygen, and it gives up this electron to complete this pair on oxygen. What you end up with is an iron atom, Fe, with no electrons left in its valence shell. That means that the the, uh, the outer shell on this iron is the next one in, which is full by definition. So he's happy and stable. Oxygen, on the other hand, brings six electrons with it and has the two electrons that iron brought with it. It now has two extra electrons, has a charge of minus two, and has a full octet. After all, there's eight electrons in its outer shell now. The Lewis structure for iron two oxide is these two ions drawn as is with their charges shown around square brackets. We use square brackets for ions and we're done. This is the Lewis structure. This is how it happens, the transfer of electrons. This is your final product. Beautiful. Best of luck.